Hello guys and welcome to this next trip report video. This should be my first trip report of 2019. Uh, this is a very special one to welcome all the new members of my community to here on YouTube. So this is LM Trip Reports. I'm Leo Martin and I'll be conducting this trip report down to London St Pancras today. So today we're going to be travelling with East Midlands trains on one of their class 222 Meridian units. I've never travelled with East Midlands trains before. Um, certainly not long haul, so we're going to be taking the trip in first class because I managed to get a very cheap first class fare. Uh, if you are interested in how to get better and cheaper fares, um, especially for first class journeys, then do have a look in the description below. There will be a little bit of a part in under the Leo's Top Tips part that will explain exactly how you can do that. So um, anyway, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's get going because uh, I'm going to be travelling down to London St Pancras from Sheffield today on East Balloons Trains First Class. Uh, on a class 222 Meridian unit. Welcome to this next trip report and roll the tape. and welcome to Sheffield. You can see there's a train right behind me if I try and get it in shot. There we go. I'll be travelling on this thing here to London St Pancras today. I'm here at Sheffield. Um, so I really can't wait to show you this trip report. I've been wanting to travel on East Midlands trains for a while and this is my opportunity to do so. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's board this train. We are going to London St Pancras. The East Midlands Trains Class 222 Meridian features an excellent first class interior with subtle dim lighting and spacious leather seating throughout. The seat layout varies from single seating to 1 plus 1 seating and for the larger groups 2 plus 2 seating with all seats featuring tables throughout. The first class menu is very well designed with the number one logo on it. I really do like this design. Here is a outline of what you can expect from travelling with East Midlands trains in their first class. Feel free to pause the video here to get a closer look of what you can expect from the menu in East Midlands trains. As standard, East Midlands trains offer a free Wi-Fi service in their first class area. This Wi-Fi is very easy to connect to, as you can see here with me using my iPhone XR to connect to the Wi-Fi. All you have to do is click Get Online Now and fill in this simple form and you have free Wi-Fi for the entirety of your journey.
shortly after departure from Sheffield we were served from the trolley, I decided to get a coffee, some apple juice and some Tyrrell's lightly salted crisps. I didn't really feel like having too much as I was going to be eating when I got down to London, but they were very friendly with serving what I had chosen to get on this journey. It was a very nice pleasant atmosphere and it was quite empty on the train, so I felt like I had a lot of room and space to myself to enjoy the journey with. Now it's time to take an in-depth view at the seating on the Class 222 Meridian First Class. The big spacious seats are very comfy for my journey down to London St Pancras and I would not hesitate to recommend them to other people. Under the seats you are able to have two power plugs there for laptops and mobile phones only. This is so that you can charge your devices whilst on the go. They are very good and useful devices, however they are positioned in quite an awkward area, I must admit. At the top, by the first class sign, is one of the reservation systems, which is digitalised, just like on the Class 220 Voyager. In order to keep a track on where my train was, I was using an app called Railcam.uk. This provides real-time diagrams to track where your train is travelling at that time. More details are available in the description below. And just like that, in almost no time at all, my first class experience with East Midlands trains was complete and we were approaching London St Pancras, the final destination. And welcome to the beautiful London terminus of London St Pancras International. Hello guys, and I hope you have enjoyed this trip report from uh, Sheffield to London St Pancras with the East London Trains Class 222 Meridian uh, in the first class uh, that I've just experienced. Uh, I am currently in Glasgow Central, this is my hotel in Glasgow Central. Uh, it's been a few days since I took that trip from Sheffield to London St Pancras. Uh, at that time I didn't really have much time uh, after the trip to, to do a, an immediate review. I wasn't staying in a hotel, I had to quite literally get on the sleeper that night and head up here to Glasgow Central. Uh, where I've been staying for some work purposes at the moment. So um, I just wanted to get this trip report out. Um, so welcome to 2019 here in the channel, if I haven't said it already. Uh, I really do hope you have enjoyed this particular trip report. It is in the style that I did have in 2018. Um, I am planning to sort of develop that into 2019 and into a, a sort of a new style for the channel, uh, new music, um, hopefully some better effects, some better shots, um, time lapses, stuff like that. So there's a lot coming towards this channel in 2019 and I really do hope you will uh, join me as we uh, progress to bigger and better things in 2019. But without further ado, let's get on with the review of East Midlands Trains Class 222 First Class. So um, the First class lounge at Sheffield is very small. Um, if any of you have ever travelled to Liverpool Street in London, uh, it does have a very similar first class lounge to that. So it's about nine, maybe ten chairs. Uh, there's a coffee machine, uh, a few packets of biscuits and some crisps, and that's literally it. It is a room. I, w I won't call it a lounge, I'd call it more of a room. Um, so it's not very big at all. Um, I had to spend about 40 minutes in there just to um you know just just to relax and um and and to get myself ready um transferring onto the uh the class 222 meridian that was due in um at that time i had traveled from liverpool on a class 158 um they're not the best it was absolutely rammed um so uh, those norwich services liverpool to norwich services they they're so so bad then then they're, they're not even real for capacity purposes they are absolutely awful they need they need like a meridian on that train on that on that particular line there having a 158 just doesn't cut it um and the the seats are very similar to the mark 3 seats in the 158 so they weren't particularly comfy anyway so coming on to the um uh, the lounge at Sheffield it was uh, it was manned which is something a little bit better than what they had at London say uh sorry London Liverpool street um and it was manned, so it did have a nice, uh, there was a nice customer host in there that was handing out tea and coffee to people. Um, she was extremely nice, extremely pleasant, talking to all the regulars like normal, um, and just sort of, um, you know, asking where we were going and um, and how we were going to be getting there and stuff, and just keeping us updated with all the train times and stuff. Uh, thankfully, our train was on time. 
Uh, we did have a few issues along along the journey. Uh, we were delayed somewhere in the London area. I think it was Radlett, uh, due to apparently uh, the train in front was a HST, an East Midlands HST, and one of the customers had apparently pulled the emergency cord. So we were delayed at Radlett for about six or seven minutes. But at the end of the at the end of the day, when we arrived into um, London St Pancras, um, we were on time. In fact, we were actually one minute early into London St Pancras, which given that we were delayed for around 11 minutes at Radlett, was quite interesting to see those timings. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe something else had occurred, I I'm not sure, but those timings are quite interesting, I must admit, um, especially with all the Thameslink services going around with Class 9 head codes now on the uh, Midland Main Line. But it was, uh, it was a good trip. I've never, ever, ever been north of Bedford on the Midland Main Line. Um, I've, I've only ever travelled with Thameslink up to Bedford and then no further than that, no further to Wellingborough or Leicester or anywhere like that. So it was good to, to be able to experience it. Uh, if I am going to do it again, I'll do it during the day. Uh, unfortunately, this trip report is is a little a little bit not the best, uh, particularly because the trip was taken at night. Well, I say at night in the late afternoon, which in um, you know in in the middle of winter isn't really helpful because it was pitch black from you know from the second we set off pretty much just got darker to the point that you know when we got into into London it was just pitch black. So um, unfortunately, there weren't there weren't the best shots of of the outside of the train uh, and also finishing in St Pancras I was in a little bit of a rush to be able to meet a friend over at King's Cross who was just about to leave so um, it is um, it wasn't the best uh, in terms of light and conditions but I, I did make the most of it and I do hope you have enjoyed it nonetheless. In terms of service uh, East Midlands Trains offered some hot and cold food and beverages as you saw in the train. Uh, I will or I have shown you in this trip report that I didn't get any of them uh, I wasn't even offered them, actually, so I'm going to say that is a minus for East Midlands and Strains, that they offer hot and cold, cold food and beverages, but they weren't prepared to, to, you know, to actually offer them to the customer. They weren't prepared to say, hello, we've got this, this and this. They were, it was more like the customer host kept coming down and eyeing me up and seeing if I wanted any tea and coffee. Well, that's fine if I'm on the train for an hour. But if I'm on the train for two hours, maybe three hours, like I am with LNER or you know Virgin Trains, I expect from an intercity uh, franchise holder to be able to um, set the standards, set the bar a little bit higher. Um, and unfortunately, uh, East Midlands Trains, they're, they're a lot better than a lot of intercity operators. Um, for example, at Bellio Greater Anglia, um, I'm going to be doing a trip report on their Class 90 next year in first class. Um, one of the last loco hauled class 90 services in the country I believe so that will be interesting uh, I have traveled with them before so um, I'll be I'll be interested to see how that compares um, but it's one of them it's it's one of the lesser big up franchises to uh, to offer hot and cold food and drinks to customers um, on long haul journeys the one that I um, that I rely on the most for that sort of stuff is traveling between Edinburgh and uh, London Kings Cross with LNER um, now they will take your order literally as soon as you leave Newcastle, probably even before that, uh, and you'll have you, you'll have a whole selection of food and drink prepared by James Martin. Uh, the menu set by James Martin. Uh, it's a brilliant experience. But with East Midlands trains, it just felt like one of those, just felt like one of those lesser operators. Um, so, if I'm going to be all honest, um, I'm going to give that trip a six out of ten. Uh, in terms of being able to get me to my destination, in terms of comfort, in terms of how I felt, and in terms of the customer interaction, you'd be looking at a good eight. I, I think they were. I think they were very nice. They were very kind. They were very um, helpful. But um, it just felt a bit weird because there was a customer host of a trolley, and then there was a separate customer host who was just going through the train randomly, and he kept sort of doing work but it was a little bit weird because he would sort of creep up on you behind and I was a bit like, um, you know, I was thinking I was going to get some coffee. He didn't have anything on him. He was just laying the table and I was a bit like, oh, okay, you know, there's there's doing your work and there's sort of like creeping up on people weirdly. Um, and he was, he moved very slowly and people that do that, you tend to, you know, you tend to look behind and sort of go, uh, what are you doing sort of thing. So um, in terms of, 
<laughs> in terms of feeling comforted, yeah, I'd say I felt comforted. A little bit too comforted uh, at times because these these customer hosts were quite quite weird. Um, yeah, I <laughs> with LNER and Virgin Trains, you just get a, you know a normal experience. Why can't you just get that on any other operator these days? Why do you have to be stalked by the customer host to the toilet and stuff like that? It was. Oh, a weird operator at the end of the day, but um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to say that they were they were good. Um, they offered a nice quality of food and drink uh, and beverages, and they kept asking uh, whether I wanted anything more. So, in terms of the whole experience, I would give it a six out of ten. Knocked down by the fact that they had a menu that they didn't enforce. Um, they have a whole kitchen available on these class two two twos, and were they prepared to use it? No, I'm not sure whether that was just my train or whether that is all East Midlands train services, but uh, on that service, uh, I didn't feel that uh, I was offered the whole selection of what they have on offer. So uh, because of that, it was a 6 out of 10, but uh, in terms of everything else, I would say that they were, they were very good and uh, are definitely worth trying out for yourself. So if you are looking to travel... Um, Leicester, Wellingborough, uh, Derby, Sheffield, Nottingham or Corby, which is the that many, which is about seven, sorry, seven, maybe eight destinations that uh, East Midlands trains operate out of London St Pancras. Um, the cheaper first class fares are definitely, definitely worth it. And um, there's a little bit in the description below on how to get cheaper fares. Uh, I have mentioned it before with LNER, uh, for example, with them, I think I paid about 60 quid to go first class between uh, Edinburgh and London. So there is uh, a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a disclaimer and a little bit of information down below on how to get rail cards and how to get cheaper fares uh, with these operators and getting first class for very cheap. I do it for nearly every journey now because it is just so cheap uh, and it's so much worth it. And it's um, I very rarely travel it, travel in standard just because the first class fares are so cheap. So uh, yeah, if you do want to learn more, there is plenty down below in the description. Go check it out uh, as soon as you can. Anyway, so I do hope you have enjoyed this trip report. There'll be plenty more where this came from. Uh, I'll be transforming to a new sort of format for my trip reports in the future, um, whereby this whole ending here where I talk about the train company for 10 minutes <laughs> uh, will be limited down to about three, uh, probably about three at the most. And I'm going to be having a lot more commentary throughout the, um, throughout the trip report itself um, rather than having to chuck it all at the end. Um, so I'm going to experience it with you rather than experiencing it at the end and then telling you about it. So um, I'll be transforming to that format over the next couple of trip reports. So do look out for that uh, in 2019. So um, yeah, I do hope you have enjoyed this trip report and uh, please do leave a like, comment or even subscribe at the bottom of the page down by the subscribe button, which is by the description. So I do hope you have enjoyed this and I'll see you in another trip report very soon. Welcome to LM Trip Reports and I'm Leo Martin. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Bye. Thank you.